If the former football player is convicted of the most serious charge of aggravated rape, he could face up to 20 years in prison. Emotions are running high in this rape retrial today as both the alleged victim and the accused both took the stand. And there were many times attorneys had to leave the room to discuss important matters. We have team coverage tonight of this high profile case. Let's begin with Chris Conti and Chris, it has been a wild day in court. And it all began with the victim this morning, Vicki. This is not the first time that she has done this, testified in court, but this was clearly an incredibly difficult day for her. She held back tears as she entered court for the first time this week, then walked to the front of courtroom 5A with every set of eyes in the room fixated upon her. I know you may be a little nervous. Okay, take your time. All right. And just a few feet away sat the man who authorities say raped her. Corey Beatty. At that moment, when you have woken up in the dorm room, did you know Corey Beatty? No, complete stranger. Prosecutor Jan Norman very delicately walked the now 24-year-old through what she remembers from June 23, 2013. The last thing she can recall is being handed a blue drink at Tin Roof. The next thing I remember is waking up in a room a really long time later, and I didn't recognize the room. It was around 8 a.m. the next morning. She was a 21-year-old senior at Vandy the day authorities say she was assaulted inside of Gillette Hall. I felt confused and out of it. I didn't, I didn't feel like myself. I was in a lot of pain. On the witness stand Friday, she did her best to maintain her composure as she looked at a photo of herself unconscious, lying on a dorm room floor. Yes. I'm going to hand you a photograph that is previously entered Exhibit 30K. Do you recognize what's in that photo? <laughs> it's me. It's me. <laughs> Three years of emotion came rushing to the surface. Had you ever blacked out before? Defense attorneys did their best to walk a fine line of questioning with the victim. But you didn't feel you had been sexually assaulted? My whole body really hurt. But. Much like Corey Beatty, she doesn't remember much. For the jury, though, this will likely be the day they will have a hard time forgetting. You have no further questions. The victim's testimony lasted an hour and 13 minutes, but perhaps the most intense part of the day here came when Corey Beatty took the stand in his own defense. And Emily Luxon is here now with more on what happened. Emily. Well, of course, that was one of the biggest questions of the day. Would Corey Beatty testify? Initially, his attorney said he would. Then he said he would not because he said he was too emotional and felt too rushed. And that led to a heated exchange with the judge. I mean, that, that's, that's, Mr. Beatty, that's you have to answer my question. Are you going to testify or not testify? I mean, I, I don't know. I have a 15-month-old son. Two weeks ago, you severed the case. Three days later, I'm going to trial. This is a whole different trial, and y'all are forcing me. Y'all are forcing me to do everything. I got a 15 month old son. I don't like this, force it. I don't no, this force is not fair. To do this anything, is not fair. Sir. This is not fair. This was everything okay. Beatty did testify for about two hours. He recalled the events of June 23, 2013. He said he had never drank that much in one setting. He repeatedly said he didn't remember what happened throughout the evening and he felt stressed out because he couldn't recall what happened and he said rumors had started. He was shown surveillance video of the evening he didn't remember. He says he also found photos on his phone the next morning he didn't recognize and deleted. I saw some pictures that I was not familiar with. Uh, it was a female. Uh, I didn't know what had happened to her. And I was just, just kind of distraught and confused how, how those images got there. After his testimony wrapped up, his former teacher and coach at Ensworth, David Whitfield, took the stand. And as you mentioned, closing arguments are underway now. The jury may begin deliberations tonight. Reporting live at the Birch Building, Emily Luxon, News Channel 5. Thank you, Emily. As you've seen, it's been a day full of ups and downs in the courtroom. You can even call it confusing at times. Nick Barrison, Nick Leonardo will continue our team coverage. Clearly a very busy day, perhaps the most emotional and busy day of the trial this morning. And I think starting with the alleged victim taking the stand and then later all the drama of Corey Beatty, would he or wouldn't he? And ultimately he did take the stand. Your take first, let's hit with the alleged victim and uh, how you thought she did. I think she did a great job. You know, I think she did actually a better job this time than she did the last time. And obviously there was a lot of emotion. She cried. And she cried. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, in hats off, she was very, very strong. 
and that she showed her willingness to participate and that she also showed that this has had a lasting and will continue to have a lasting effect on her and I think that message resonated with the jury uh, no doubt. Okay then we saw in the afternoon Corey Beatty there was drama leading up to it whether or not he would take the stand at first yes then they changed their mind there was an interaction between him and the judge. That's exactly right it, you know Mr. Beatty wasn't sure if he wanted to testify then you had conflicting uh, reports from defense counsels as to whether, whether or not they were was, in agreement. That's and, exactly right but uh, at the end of the day after a bunch of discussion and, and really some interesting courtroom antics mm -hmm. uh, he did decide ultimately to take the stand and uh, I, you know I don't know that he helped himself at all yeah and I'm not so sure on cross-examination though we thought they'd really go after him I didn't think they damaged him all that much under cross well and I think that the prosecution didn't do everything they could because I think they have faith that where they are now there's a strong likelihood that they're going to receive a conviction on the indicted offenses all right yeah they think they have a strong case we'll see if the defense did enough the jury will be getting it soon enough we'll continue to follow this case stay with us with our gavel to gavel to coverage and we'll send it back to you in the studio all right